Hello, everyone. Welcome to Nails and Beauty Talk. I am your host, Asia the Bird. To have a very special guest with me today, she is a nail artist, she's a nail educator, she's a Julie K. Nailpreneur. Please welcome Tips X Tara. Hello, Tara. Welcome to Hi. the show. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, no. Glad that you asked for me to be here today to do an interview with me so um, we can get started. All right, cool, cool. But I definitely want to get started by asking where are you originally from and tell us about your upbringing. Okay, so I'm from Connecticut, born and raised. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been into anything beauty, really. Mm -hmm. um, I've always loved fashion. Um, most people that truly knows me, they know that I do love makeup as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I know if I wasn't doing nails, I know that I probably would be a makeup artist. <laughs> so I do love makeup. I'm the guinea pig when I go to Sephora or anywhere. They show me a new product, I buy it. And then when I get home, I may not know how to use it. Um, right. Or sometimes I do know how to use it. So that's just me in general. So I just love anything with beauty, fashion, and the whole beauty industry is just me in, in a sense. Yeah, that's really, really cool. But I definitely want to get into just in regards to like, you know, with beauty, like what's like your fondest memories when you were younger, just in regards to beauty? Well, my mom has always been into beauty. Um, since a kid, we've always traveled. Um, every summer she took me on trips. Um, at nine, I went to Europe. Um, mm -hmm. um, she gave me a very, very good life. I will definitely say that. Mm -hmm. Um I've seen many, many parts of the world. I've always been traveling. She's always been a Bloomingdale's kind of woman. Um, if you're from Connecticut years ago, we used to have a store called G Fox. Mm. Um, oh God, I may be showing my age, but um, <laughs> it's like, just think of like a Bloomingdale's or one of those mm -hmm. big major stores like a Macy's. So right. I believe Macy's took over them, but... Mm it's used to be the main it was a very big store that many people did know about and we would always go shopping in there from when i was like a toddler um mm -hmm. and she's also very much into fashion and stuff like that so i believe i get it from her and my aunts and all of them they're very much into beauty so i mm -hmm. believe it's just something i was raised into and then I have a natural liking for it as well. Tell us about your experience of like getting into a uh, nail school. Like, what has been your experience in terms of a uh, nail school? Well, I'm from Connecticut, so they didn't pass the law for nail techs to be licensed until about mm -hmm. maybe two or three years ago. Um, I did go to nail school, but I just went basically for you know mm -hmm. just to be certified and to have the paper behind your name. But what mm -hmm. I will tell people. Um, what you see on my page is not learned from nail school. Um, mm -hmm. It's more so me doing a lot of hands-on and paying for outside nail classes with other nail artists. So mm -hmm. I've paid for classes with um, Poochie's Nails, which she's in Georgia. I've taken classes with Helen. She's a big major nail artist. I love her work. Um, right. During the pandemic, there were so many other classes that I paid for, like just random different people that I admire their work. I would pay for those classes and then I will put into action after the class. Um, just like if you're in college, you know, if you're mm -hmm. going to class every day, but if you're not going home to study and retain what you learned, then there's just no point of you going to class. So I always mm -hmm. like to tell people, you're taking a class, but are you reinforcing what you learned are you going back home are you practicing again are you trying mm -hmm. to learn because you can't remember everything from that day and think that you're gonna just automatically have it in front of a client it doesn't work like right that. yeah so mm -hmm. i've taken many 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 classes um mm -hmm. i've even traveled to jamaica for a course before um really yes uh, wow. i took a class with nails by marcia um mm -hmm. i've taken like I said, Helen, um, mm -hmm. Poochie's Nails, it's just the list mm -hmm. goes on and on and on. So I would say within my first maybe two to three years, I invested a lot into classes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think self-study is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And that's what I had to do because I'm a licensed cosmetologist and I took, of course, you know, cosmetology courses in high school. But mm -hmm. even before and after I took cosmetology courses, I had to study a lot of, about nail stuff. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, they're going to teach you the basics, but you have to learn the vast majority of what you need to learn. Yeah. Yep. So a lot of it goes into yourself. Um, mm -hmm. And one thing I, I would like to clear with, like, even with social media, they're like, you know, some people feel like, oh, when they see someone that does nails say that they're self-taught, that they're just not licensed, when most people don't understand the license doesn't teach you what you see on Instagram. So those Instagram nails that you're seeing, we are all self-taught. Yeah, we probably mm -hmm. went to school to get the license behind our right. name just so we're, you know, legal-wise, we are legally able to do our job and to charge people. But those nails that you see on Instagram that's getting the thousand likes or a bunch of views and stuff like that, they had to teach yourself to do that. That's not something right. you're going to learn in nail school. Mm -hmm. They mostly focus on sanitation, you know, mm -hmm. keeping your area clean and, you know, just the study of the nail itself and right. like certain things that can spread onto the nail if, you know, if it interacts with certain germs or whatever the case may be. But it's not going to mm -hmm. go into detail on how would you put stones on like Cardi B nails type. <laughs> so, oh, right, right. Yeah. So you're not going to learn that kind of stuff in nail school. Yeah, Yeah. It's not to that extent. No. You know, so there again, you have to learn a lot of stuff on your own because they only going to teach you like the basics, like you know, manicures, mm -hmm. pedicures, yep. you know, sanitation, mm -hmm. you know, and that's pretty much it. And then you're pretty much out the door, <laughs> yep. and you're on your own, and that's it. So, yeah, yep. that's that's what it is essentially. But I want to switch gears and talk about um, your private nail studio. So, you have your own nail studio, and I definitely want to ask what has been the journey like having your own nail studio. Wow. Um, I did it scared. <laughs> um, I just took a leap of faith, honestly. Uh, when I decided to have my own private nail studio, I didn't really have what you would say a lot of clients. It was just a gut feeling I had where I felt it was time for me to be on my own um, mm -hmm. and just take the journey on with myself, but I knew that with that gut feeling that I had to put a lot of work in and that's what I did do. I mean, mm -hmm. sleepless nights, nonstop practicing, nonstop researching. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I would say even still to this day, I barely get sleep. <laughs> I'm a person mm -hmm. I don't really get much sleep because my mind is just always going and thinking of what can right. I do next to get to that next level. Um, right. But I'm not trying to burn myself out at the same time. Right. Um, so in the first two years or whatever the case may be, I did have a focus on, you know, making sure that I would have all my clientele that I need to have because I have to pay bills. So mm -hmm. I would make sure that I'm focused on what the average person wants because that's mm -hmm. the key to making sure you stay in business. What is it that people want? What is it that I'm good at? I know that if my nails are shaped nicely, the cuticles are clean, and mm -hmm. the polish is smooth and not lumpy like the chop shop that they're used to going to, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to have clients all the time, you know? Right. And what I would like to add in is that, you know, what you see on social media, that's not the average client for a day-to-day -day person. Yes, right. it looks pretty, or unless you're in that type of, you know, environment, say mm -hmm. if you're in California or Miami or New York or right. something in that kind of sense, then maybe you may have a lot more clientele to have the Instagram look, but right. your day-to-day -day client where you, you know, can pay your bills and take care of your household and your family mm -hmm. is that woman who's going to work her nine to five all the time, has her kids at home, and she just wants a nice, clean manicure look or... Right. I had a lot of nurses in the beginning as well. Um, just people in that kind of profession, the medical field, they're not going to go to work with 10 stones <laughs> all over their nails. But if you can mm -hmm. give them a nice, polished, clean look, you're sold. And they're not going to leave you. So they're there with you for a lifetime. Um, then as I started to, you know, 
shift, like I said, I'm always thinking of what I want to do next. Um, then that's when I shifted into saying, you know, how can I build my brand? How can I get tips by Tara to be known like how you see a Chanel symbol? You see Chanel, right. you know that Chanel. So then I started to focus on, okay, I'm still going to continue doing my nails, but what can I do to have the audience of people notice that's a tips by Tara set? Um, you know, if I want this type of look, I have to get that mm -hmm. from Tara. That's not mm -hmm. something where, you know, I would just go to any plain Jane place. That's just right. like I use Cardi B's nail tech, for example, a lot. Um, if you know you want the bling, you're going to book an appointment with her. You get what I mean? Right. She's set in stone what her style is. She's branded herself in that kind of way. So if you know that's what you're looking for, that's where you need to go. That's where you need to book the appointment. That's where you're going to get the job done. And that's where you're going to get what you're looking for. So that's what led me to start looking into um, competitions. Like when I did NTNA for season eight. Um, mm -hmm. And the reason I would say I picked that one, because I know how intense it is before you're even selected to start the competition. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that, yeah, you may see the top 13, but there's a process that goes along before they even select the top 13 before you're actually even in the competition. So exactly. it's like, I told myself, if I can do that, then it kind of gave me a confidence to say, okay, well, I do know how to do nails. You know, you're looking at your work every day, but you're not really knowing, am I really that good? Or do people really like my work? So I wanted to just get a different, opinion from people who are actually in the industry and who's been in the industry for years and they actually fully and know and understand nails um at that mm -hmm. time when i joined into the competition i was only maybe i would say four or five years into nails um mm -hmm. so when i would look at i actually think competitors but when i just look at other people who do nails and i admire their work they have like 10 plus years in Right. So I'm still like sort of a baby in the industry and I'm still, I still consider myself a baby um, compared to the people that I'm working around now, who's been doing nails, mm -hmm. maybe 15, 20 years or whatever the case may be. Right. I haven't been doing nails that long. So <laughs> I still have a lot to learn along the way. So mm -hmm. with having the nail studio, it's built my skills to know how to do business Mm -hmm. to know how to get customers, how to retain clients, and how to maintain my work. Right. So that's been my journey as far as with having a nail stu studio. And I'm happy I did take that leap on my gut feeling to, you know, go out on my own and see what I can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing that I liked about NTNA because it really mm -hmm. pushes you to really extend your creativity you know, mm -hmm. how far could you extend your creativity and your imagination? And, and that's the thing. Now, the only thing with NTNA is that I wish there was more clarity in regards to what could be worked on, possibly, or like a full breakdown of like, okay, this part needs to be worked on and things like that. So I think it's just a little bit of the clarity in um, regards to the mm -hmm. judging in, in my perspective. Um, but but I really like the competition because, like I said, it you know, it does challenge you. You get to work with different things. Yes. You know, so that was really, really cool. And I think one of my favorite challenges, I would say, is the first challenge that I really liked. I forgot what it's called, but it's like you do like a set of 10 nails and you do like. A oh, yes. Nails. I remember that one. Yes. Mm -hmm. I would possibly say that's my favorite one, too. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said before, this was my very first competition. I've never done a competition <laughs> before. So I'm like, oh, my God, am I going to make it through the first challenge? Um, right. because people don't understand that it's sort of like a America's next top model type thing. So right. you do the first challenge and you can be eliminated after that. Mm -hmm. So it was sort of like, okay, Tara, can you do the first challenge and still make it to the second, you know, second challenge mm -hmm. and not be at the bottom where you, you know, you have a possibility of still being eliminated. So mm -hmm. once I got through that first challenge, I was like, oh, okay. So... <laughs> 
I made it into the competition. I'm actually doing it. And I got to the first challenge and I got to the second one without being in the bottom. I was like, wow, right. this is this is a big, big deal for me. You know, maybe for some other people it wasn't because, you know, they've probably done competitions before in the past. But as far as for me, I never did any before. And for me to have been so new into the nail industry like that and to be in something so big right in that kind of way and exactly. to have people you know like C and D and everything judge me and mm -hmm. even Beth who's been in the industry for years it was just like wow mm -hmm. it was mind blowing for me so I I think it was just more so a lot of shocking for myself to just be like wow you're really mm -hmm. doing this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Now, would you do NTNA again, or are you pretty much just like, nah? <laughs> well, honestly, um, like I said, it was a challenge for me to see if I can do a competition. Um, I've never done any other ones before, but the way how my schedule is now, mm -hmm. I don't have the time to do any <laughs> any competitions. So whether it's NTNA or any other one, it's just not even fit in my schedule with right. me working back and forth in different states because I'm not just working in Connecticut anymore. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't even have the time to, you know, to know how to sit and do that. And being that I did it already, I know mm -hmm. that it takes time. You know, mm -hmm. you have to think of your design that you want to make, then you have to right. record and then you have your essay that you need to write and yeah. stuff like that. So you, I wouldn't have the time to do NTNA or any other you know, competitions at this present time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think it's something you, you always want to keep yourself going in something. Who knows if my life wasn't set up the way that it is now, maybe I would, mm -hmm. but I know right now, I just, I wouldn't be able to, <laughs> right, to right. handle that. I know I probably would be eliminated after the first round because I just <laughs> wouldn't, I wouldn't put the amount of effort that I really need to put mm -hmm. into it. Yeah, that's so understandable because, like, you know, it's so much stuff going on, you know, that, yeah. that you know, you know, you're working with and things like that. But I want to go ahead and ask, like, what were some of like your favorite challenges besides the first challenge, and what would you say was like the least favorite, if if you have a least favorite? Um, I'm glad you said if I did have any least favorites. Um, I did. <laughs> um, once again, it's just all going back to when you're just doing something you never know about. Right. It's just it was just a whole learning process for me because like I right. said, I never done a nail competition before a day in my life. Mm -hmm. So it was just a whole new learning experience for me, a whole learning a, a different avenue of nails that I'm learning that I'm like, okay, so is this is this how competitions are done? Is this how most competitions are done? Um mm -hmm. By me not doing any previous competitions in the past, I don't have anything to compare it to. So right. I don't know what would I like or dislike because mm -hmm. you can't speak on something that you never really have experience with. Right. You know, that's just like a doc, a surgeon who's been doing surgeries for 30 years. You can't ask a surgeon who just started maybe yesterday, <laughs> you know, how did you heart right. surgery? Because they're, right. they're, you know, their experience is completely different. So right. maybe a person who's done multiple nail compositions can have a, you know, a difference of what they like, what they don't like versus me who I've only done one. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I can't really say, oh, I didn't like this about it or I dislike mm -hmm. that about it because it's just a whole learning process for me while I'm in it because this is something so brand new to me. So mm -hmm. for me, I was just happy, you know, I extended my creativity. Mm -hmm. um, I love the fact that I learned how to um, enhance my video skills. Right. Um, that's what's helped me today. <laughs> I'm able <laughs> to do reels a lot better and everything like that. So I think if I didn't have that competition, it wouldn't help to mold me to who I am today. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, Absolutely. it was a competition, but it's helped me with so many other things that I'm doing today currently. So mm -hmm. I'm very happy that I did challenge myself to even think of doing it. And I actually felt like I succeeded. Yeah, I may not mm -hmm. physically won the entire competition, but I'm mm -hmm. doing so much more because of the competition, I feel. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Because you know, by during the time of the pandemic, I did this uh, competition called Nell Olympia. So Nell Olympia is a bit different. So they're hosted by uh, Scratch Magazine, which oh, is like okay. the leading um, Nell magazine in the uh, in the UK. And the thing with Nell Olympia is a little different um, at at the time mm -hmm. during the pandemic because it was online, and you know, um, all you did oh, was like, okay. You do like a set of nails. Like you choose a category that you want to do. You pay for the categories. And then, you know, once you do the competitions, the different competitions, then they ask for like a 50 word um, description. And that's all you pretty much send. But now since everything is open, they're doing, there's competitions now that's on the physical, you know, arena or convention uh, uh, places or the, the arena floor, you know, okay. so they're doing it like physically in person now since everything is, you know, lifted up. Oh, so okay. that's, that's nice. Thing. Yeah, yeah. I find it to be very, very interesting and cool. But even with physically doing it in front of, you know, other competitors and things like that, you know, you consider you have to consider more so with time. So you don't have like a week, you have like a few hours to get a set done. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Oh, that would be stressful. <laughs> stressful <laughs> for me, I think. Yeah. So who mm -hmm. knows? So maybe in that case, I probably would like NCNA better because I could have more time mm -hmm. <laughs> to get like a couple more days in before I actually put out there versus me being in front of someone physically and have to do it within a few hours. So, you know, it's just like I said, it was just a whole new learning experience. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel I'm in a, you know, uh, experience level to say, you know, what I didn't like with it because I don't right. have anything else to compare it with because I've never done any other competitions. So mm -hmm. by it being my first one, I just know that there's a lot of things that has helped me with with what I'm using today. So mm -hmm. um, I think if I didn't do it, you know, because I've always wanted to be able to have like my YouTube and stuff like that. So by mm -hmm. me learning how to um, video better and the judges mm -hmm. are telling you, you know, you need to stay more in frame and needs to have a you know, better lighting background, there's a lot of shading, da 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 da. Those are little things I never knew about. <laughs> so for me to get that information and for free, because right. you know, a lot of people charge you for everything now. So for me to have access mm -hmm. to that kind of, you know, and these are people that are gonna tell you the truth, you know, to get that kind of yeah. information for free and be able to take it along with me on my journey for the rest of my nail career, I think that's just like the best gift in the world. <laughs> Mm, yeah, right, exactly. But I want to get into in regards to your nail art style. So how could you describe like your nail art style? How do you like to do how do you like to do nail art? Whew. Um I would I would definitely say my I feel that my art is very clean. Um with a chic twist to it. So I can take a trendy look and make it look modernized today in 2023 um mm -hmm. you know it could have been something that was done in the 90s but i will add my own tara twist to it where you'll be like okay i know she did that um and i would verse i would also say that i'm versatile so i can take you from a plain basic manny with a solid color and i can take you all the way up to a ntna you know 3d and art design stuff nails all right. over the place you know that type of look and it's just based on what the client will want so i usually ask people what are you looking for mm -hmm. and then i i get an idea of okay so this person is not into too much heavy art because not right. everybody's into that um this person may be a little more mellow this person is into the extra stuff so i, I can right. throw some bling on her and you know, make it more shiny and she will love it, the glitters and everything. While there's some other right. people who are like, I don't want any glitter, I don't want any shine. Just give <laughs> me a simple minimalist look and I'm okay with that. So right. I, I would consider myself very versatile. Um, like I said, clean, chic type looks and mm -hmm. I can still keep up with trends at the same time. Mm -hmm. So all in one, I would consider that versatile. You know, because there's some people who like to just focus on just one specific type of art. Mm -hmm. I'm a person I don't like to focus on just one thing. I will get bored right. quick. So I like to know how to do many different things. It just keeps me going as a person. Mm -hmm. While some people, they'll tell you, oh, just focus on one thing. When For me, I don't like to work like that. I just like right. to know 
how to do multiple different things and right exactly to keep that keeps it fun for me yeah yeah yeah, I think with versatility, that definitely keeps things interesting, especially when you post mm -hmm. your work. You know, they see like, oh, you could do a different ton of stuff instead of just one thing. Yeah. Yep. Mm, yeah, absolutely. I want to get into in regards to editorials. Like, what has been 